Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday night edition of uh, The Road to the Show. Uh, as always with uh, your host here, Johnny Mack. I got a, I got a real special guest for us today, two-time Stanley Cup champ, World Junior champ, Memorial Cup champ, David Boland uh, from Mimico, Ontario. Hey, welcome, bud. How are you? What's happening? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been, uh, been a while here. How's uh, the weather in Florida? It's going good. Yeah, it's it's nice here. It's just getting hot. It's getting hotter now since the the time is changing, and we should be getting hotter back home in Canada. There, so um, yeah. it's kind of it's, it's it's getting a lot hotter here. So, um, For sure. but it's good here. It's it's nice. So it's relaxing. Awesome. So I want to dive right into it, Dave. I got so much to cover with you. Just uh, you know, with our history and 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 you know your family and stuff. Uh, I want to get right into kind of. Uh, um, growing up in Mimico, right? Real special place to you. And tell me about life as a little guy in uh, in in Mimico, which for for those who don't know, it's a a, a suburb of Toronto, just uh, southern Etobicoke. Um, real cool little little spot and uh, and awesome people. So tell me what it was like growing up there. <coughs> yeah, Mimico is just a uh, a blue collared, working hard families. Um, most of their fathers were all at work um, most of the time. Mothers working to her at home. Um, I know myself, uh, we had, I had three other brothers, so we were, we had a, enough to do, but, um, we come, I come home from school and it'd be hockey. So I, I'd be leaving the house and going out. Uh, there, there, there was a, I forget what it's called now, the ice rink down the street from our house. Um, it was literally five minutes away and I grabbed my skates and we would, we would literally, I'd be gone right after school or weekends, and I wouldn't come home till about nine or ten o'clock at night because um, I'd be out playing hockey. Um, so Mimico is just a hardworking, blue-collar neighborhood that uh, that, uh, that there's a lot of great people there, and, and it was was great for me to grow up there. Oh, absolutely, and and um, you know, you you have a lot in common with uh, another Mimico native who uh, a lot of our uh, our listeners would know here. Of course, the Leaf fans, uh, Brendan Shanahan. So your family and Brendan were kind of intertwined at uh, at you know basically from your childhood all the way up, and and the similarities. Uh, I'm just going to run through a couple of the similarities between between you and Shani. Um, uh, basically, you know, you, you're, bo- you're, you're both one of four boys, right? Grew up in Mimico. Mm-hmm. Um, both had a dad who immigrated from, uh, immigrated to Canada. He had, you know, uh, Shani's dad from Ireland. And of course your dad drew from Scotland. Yep. Um, you both went to St. Leo's primary school, right? True. You're both, you both, both played lacrosse at a high level. Yep. And you were both drafted I- into the OHL in the first round. Uh, you both to the same team to the London Knights. Yeah, 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 crazy. Um, you know, just uh, and I and I know, <clears throat> I remember when you were a kid and Shanny won a a couple cups there in Detroit. Um, you, you were able to to you know see what that was like and see what kind of impact that had on the community and and of course you know we'll get into that later. But you, you were able to repay um the community as well. Um, I, your dad's been feeding me some little, uh, little stories and I have some of my own that I want to talk to you about here. Um, broke a neighbor's window when you were playing uh, hockey, when you were, you, you shot oh, a yeah. rock or something. What, 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 what happened there? Yeah. I, there'd be pebbles sitting around and rocks and 
uh, I think there's neighborhood his neighbors like right next to us, like right across the street from us. And I was always just trying to hit slap shots and <laughs> hit the net. Uh, and I think there was like this little pebble, probably like good size. And I just took a nice little slap shot at it. Went right through the, the neighbor's window. Nice, nice, good hole. Right. I think they were watching TV. Um, so I ran in the house because I knew because I knew I was gonna get in shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I just ran. I ran in the house like nothing happened. And eventually, the neighbor came over and knew it was me. But uh, I remember. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and for those who don't, I mean, you know, your three brothers are massive, massive kids and and men now. And yep. and I remember you would kind of tag along with Sean, your older brother, and, yep. and and you'd play ball hockey and street hockey and things like that with him. <clears throat> Is that where you got your toughness from? Because you must have been so much smaller than that crew. Uh, well, yeah, I was a lot smaller. Um, I'd say I was the smallest out of all three of the of my other brothers. Yeah, uh, I didn't get to the I didn't get to the I didn't get to the food as quick as they did, but. Uh, <laughs> They always beat me, but uh, but yeah, I, uh, I growing up, Sean was always playing, and he had his his friends. Uh, he's way older than me. He well, he'd be a bit older than me. Sorry, but um, probably five or six years. But uh, I'd go out and play with all his buddies, and they would basically beat me up and kind of get into it. But I think I think also. Growing up with three brothers, uh, you get in a few tilts, a few fights once in a while. So I think that kind of helped as well. Um, we'd be playing WWE, you know, breaking beds, and we'd be at the emergency. I'd say we were at the emergency once a month with either broken ribs or stitches or <laughs> yeah. or something. So, but uh, but yeah, I think the toughness kind of came from both of those ends. Oh, for sure, for sure, and um, yeah, I, I can imagine uh, your 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 mom, uh, Carol, g- <laughs> given given the four of you shit for uh, for acting up. One thing I remember, you know, very clearly about Sean, um, Sean was was real. Sean was involved in a lot of your minor hockey, and and only being four or five years older, I can remember Sean coming out and helping us when, when I coached you and, and then he was a trainer with the Red Wings. If I, if I remember correctly, like he was on the bench, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was. yeah, he was. Yeah. He was, he did the training uh, yep. with us the one year. Yeah. That's, and he was always, was always over. around and, and real yeah. supportive of your career as were your other brothers and, and oh, yeah. uh, M- Michael and, uh, and Brandon and, and, and then of course your folks. So um, MTHL. So your hockey career starts, you played in, uh, in Etobicoke there. What was it? Faustina? Is that where you started? No, I played at uh, Queensway. Queensway Canadians, Queensway. that's right. Yeah, Queensway yeah. Canadians. I played, played. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, we started there at Queensway, at Mimico Arena. Um, just and that's kind of how uh, the Shanahan's and us kind of got intertwined. Was uh, Brian was my coach when I was I think Tiker. Yeah, six, six way or back seven. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he kind of got me into. We got in the hockey, he coached me there, and then he was a big lacrosse guy, Brian. So he kind of uh, he kind of pushed us along with, with the lacrosse side of it. But uh, but yeah, I played <clears throat> played at Queensway for I'm not sure how long. So it's just tough thinking. Remember going back now. Yeah. Um, so I played house league, and then I played for the Mississauga Hornets. Yeah. I think that was single A. That was first year novice. It was Mississauga, or like um, a minor novice, Mississauga Hornets. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went on to play for North York Rangers. Yeah. And then from there, I think it was, uh, <clears throat> and then from there, it was the uh, the Toronto Red Wings. Yeah. And so, so of... absolutely backing up a little bit. So, so, so how, how you and I kind of came to, to, you know, be in each other's lives, so to speak. Um, we, I got uh, Billy Burke, uh, Billy Senior, um, wanted me to coach this uh, this North York Rangers team, and it was a uh, it was an expansion team, and and so we 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 weren't getting anybody at our tryouts, right? 
and and they had recruited some players that you know in my opinion were very good um you know so so we we needed to find a stud so remember brian bongard and myself we were mm-hmm. going to the marley's tryouts and the young nats tryouts and 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 you know all over the place and i got to give brian credit where credit's due brian says to me so we're watching you're at the north york canadians tryout and it's mm-hmm. you and what was your buddy's name uh there was another Mimico kid there, not Sherard. Um, I think he ended up working at the rink in uh, MasterCard Center. Do you know who I mean? He was there as well. His dad was named John. Your dad would know right away. My dad um, would probably know. Yeah. My, my, I'm trying to think back, but. Yeah. Anyway, so you guys know, were but... you guys were on the ice. Brian says to me, he goes, look at that kid in the Hornet socks," And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, well, you know, he goes, no, watch. Him. He said, and 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 you, you were almost almost David running on your skates, right? But you oh, yeah. had hands, you had a big shot already, and you uh-huh. had that kind of thing in your eyes. And I remember after you won the cup in Toronto, the star um interviewed me about about that time. And I was like, Yeah, I said, This kid kind of had <laughs> he had some intangibles that you can't teach, right? He had toughness yeah. and determination and 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 I'm a power skating guy, so I, I remember calling your dad, and and say or meeting him and saying, hey, you know what, we'd love to have him. And he said, well, I don't know, you know, that the, the AAA coaches, you know, think he's a good Double A player. And I said, well, I said I think they're all full of shit because they they don't they they don't see what we see. Um, I said if we footwork and get some some, I think he could be a dominant player. You scored so anyway, you ended up signing with us. You scored 57 that year. First year in uh, in the MTHL at the AAA level against yeah. you know three or four teams that that thought you were a good Double A player and I used mm-hmm. to motivate you. I don't know if you remember this. You were you know eight years old and I I'd, I'd get in your face. I'd go, hey, we're playing the Marlies today, Dave. You'd go, yeah, and I'd go. Remember when you went to their tryout <laughs> and they didn't <laughs> want you and you'd go, yeah, and then you'd oh, go yeah. out like a caged animal and you know put up four goals and a couple penalties and. Um, no, it was, it was a tremendous, so we, I had you for two years there. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, we had a, we had a gritty team and, and, you know, like Billy Burke and Steve Ward and, yeah. and, and guys like that. Do you ever see Steve or ever talk to Steve at all? Uh, we, I've got him on Instagram and all that. So yeah. I know, I know my dad talks to, uh, Bill. Yeah. Talks to Bill a lot. Um, but yeah, same, like I've got him on Instagram and we chat yeah. once in a while, say hello. Yeah, because uh, you guys kind of stayed together and uh, went over to the Red Wings uh, after our minor Adam year. Um, I moved on and went went over to Guelph, and you guys were at, at the Red Wings, and the, the, the kind of band kind of split up. But but you got yourself into a real good situation with the Red Wings because obviously that that organization has a lot of history and 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 the recruiting that they did. So you know who Evan McGrath was around was Ty Rain there, Ty Rain maybe. Or was, um, he was he there when I was there? I'm trying to think, but like Brian Bickle was with us. Bickle, yeah. Oh boy, drawing a blank, eh? Remember. Oh well. Yeah. Well, oh, the, the like Morrison, the... Jordan Morrison. Yeah, Jordan mm-hmm. Morrison was there. Yeah, Morrison was there. Um, yeah. Jeez, who else? Oh, there was a bunch Joey of them. Pa- that I mean, you, Joey you know, Pacone. There... Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Steve Van Onlangs was the coach, and he was a yeah, real. Yeah, Steve good Van Onlangs coach. was the coach. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you so guys was... stayed stayed together for a few years, um, and then and then I, you know, getting into you know the 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 minor band or the the, the OHL OHL Cup year, and we stayed in touch. I would all you know you know you you'd come on the ice with me in the summer, or we'd you know. We'd certainly always uh, uh, keep in touch with your family and, and, and Drew and Carol. And I, and I remember, uh, you know, watching a lot of it. And whenever you were in the kitchen or Guelph, I'd go and watch. And, and, and if I was in Toronto, I'd come and see. I did a couple power skates with your teams through there. Um, yeah. But then yep. we, we end up um, at the OHL Cup. Now, I, I, talk, I told this story with the Shreppy a couple weeks ago. So OHL Cup's going on. And, and for those of you who don't know what it is, is it gets a – the top age of uh, it's like the Ontario championships with all the draft eligible players, um, you know, to go into the OHL draft. So Dave comes in and, and he's got eight goals and no apples through the round Robin and the semis. Right. 
Yeah, so I think I'm pretty sure it was. Your, yeah, your dad, your dad would always on going going to do a big game. He'd call, "Hey, do you have any advice for David going into the game t- tonight? You're playing against the Donatis and and Oakville in the OHL yeah. Cup, Cup final." So yep. I, I said to you, and I don't see if you remember this. I said, Dave, you got eight goals and zero apples uh, past the effing puck is what I said mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. And you went out in the final and had four helpers and you yeah. guys won five, five, won two like, or something like that. Five, yeah. two or something like that. Like yeah. Goals. Yeah. But tremendous, tremendous uh, time. I'm going to bring in, we've got a little uh, bit that we do every week, uh, but it's, uh, it's our junior cub reporter. Um, I'm going to play his video, his intro, and then, uh, he's got a couple questions for you. Uh, yep, I know yep. he's going to be thrilled to get on here. Yeah. There we go. Please welcome to the show. Our show's very own junior reporter, Jack. There he is. How are you, pal? Good. What kind of jersey and hat do you have on today? Uh, Chicago and Toronto because David played for those teams. Played for both those yeah. teams, that's right. Yeah. Both those teams, hundred percent. Do you have any questions for Dave today? Yeah, hit me. What do you got? I uh, think so. What is your favorite NHL team? Right now or when I played? Uh, right now. Right now, well, I got to stick with the Blackhawks because I won two Stanley Cups. But coming from Toronto, Toronto's still my favorite. And I would love to see Toronto win a Stanley Cup before. <laughs> I think everybody before everybody dies. But uh, that's, uh, that's the, the main thing. But uh, I think Chicago will always be, be my team, be my favorite team. What would you think if... Chicago got Connor Bedard. Well, if they got Connor. If he gets well, right now, if they if they don't get Connor Bedard, they're on a bit of a they're in a long, long rebuild. That would probably be how many years. If they get Bedard, they could shake it around pretty quick and add a few players around, and and I bet you they could be contenders again. So I'm hoping the lottery goes well for them, and they they get uh, they get that first pick. Was my dad a good coach? <laughs> oh, now you're going back really far. Yeah, he was a great coach. He was he was great with us. He was always giving us, kicking us in the butt, and getting us going. I know it's uh, probably a little different nowadays. You can't can't get in the kids' faces and nope. yell at them. But uh, but yeah, it was it was good. He was really good with us. Yeah. How did lacrosse help your hockey career? Uh, lacrosse was great for my hockey career because <clears throat> it would um during uh the summertime i'd put down the skates and not go on the ice and i'd stay off it <clears throat> excuse me um i'd put my hockey gear away for the whole summer and i'd go play the cross but the cross was always good for toughness cardio um even even a little bit of weight a little bit of strength training because you're cross checking and you're getting that guys. So it was, uh, it's, it's a great sport. And I think a lot of people, a lot of hockey kids should play that during the summertime. Yeah. Awesome. Well, do you have any, any more questions for, for, uh, uh David or are you done for the night? You're going to go get ready for bed. Jack was in a tournament this weekend, Dave. We just, uh, we just wrapped up with a, he had a real good tournament, worked hard, and, and nice. uh, sniped a couple and played some defense. And, uh, yeah, it was good. There okay? we go. All right. As thanks, you're having fun. That's the main thing. Bye. See you, Jack. Right. See yeah. you buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. So just talking back about your minor <laughs> hockey. Do you remember this? So we were in Detroit, and we were playing, uh, playing in the Triple H, you know, Honey Baked and all those teams back in, I think, minor Adam. And uh, – we had uh, a short window between games, and I said, "Okay, no swimming. There's no swimming at all, right? Mm. Between these yep. games, we can go after the second game." And then I got suspicious because I couldn't, I didn't know where anybody was, and I remember going down to the pool. Three uh, families there: <laughs> the the Bolins, 
somebody else and somebody else. And, and then I'm like, Oh, great. What am I going to do here now? If, 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 if I, if I punish David and don't, you know, sit him for a period, I said, we're going to lose by six. Right. So we, yeah. we let it slide, but your dad remembers that. Cause we talked about that the other day. Right. And, and <laughs> I I've got a yeah. different philosophy now. So, so, you know, fast really the years since I, since I coached you and I, and I'm, and I'm back and I'm coaching the same age. Right. And you're bang on, you can't, you don't have the, you, you, you can't swear anymore. You can't, you know, um, you, even sit kids. It's, 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 it's nuts. But my philosophy's yeah. changed on the whole swimming thing because, you know, I, I've been around the game so long and, 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 you know, you go to a tournament, like for instance, we're going to be in Quebec city um, this weekend coming Jack's playing for the team Quebec. So we're going to go up there and, and then, you know, he's not going to remember any of those games. You know what he's going to remember? Swimming in the pool with his buddies, carrying oh, yeah. on and going on the water slide and stuff like that. So I, I've kind of, maybe I'm, I've softened a bit with my, with my old age, but uh, yeah, I'm looking at it and they're kids, right? At the end of the day, you guys are kids and you get out on the ice and, and, and you do what you do. And, and yeah, uh, you know, nowadays kids, they, they, kids have so much energy. Well, yeah. Now it's just trying to keep up to my little ones. It's tough, but uh, I bet. Yeah. But how, and so Lincoln, uh, yeah. Lincoln and Benjamin, how old are they now? Yeah, we got a nine and a two year old. Wow. Good. Yeah. So you and ECAT are, uh, are running a little bit. Hey, yeah, so it's fun. <laughs> awesome. Keep us busy. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right. So let's uh <laughs> let's move on here. We talked a little bit about lacrosse. Uh I want to get into that. We talked about the OHL Cup. So now now the London uh London Knights. So when you're gonna be drafted, and I remember this, London was where you wanted to go. Am I correct there? Because of Shanny? Uh yeah. And I know the the hunters bought it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think Sarnia picked ahead of me. P sorry, picked just ahead. It was either Sarnia. I think they might have picked ahead, just ahead of London. And then I remember Peterborough wanted me, but they were. I think I went seventh overall, and Peterborough was like ninth or eighth. Yeah, they picked Morrison. They picked Jordan Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I think that's. But. Uh, but London was, <clears throat> London was getting a new rink, and the Hunters bought it, and and they were they had some good things going there. So yeah, and um, Rick Nash and Corey Perry at that time, right? Yeah, so they had both of those guys there. So those were two household names that will be Hall of Famers here probably Absolutely. sooner or later. But um, but they were uh, they were guys that that you seen, and the Hunters are great people and great owners and great teachers of the game. So that, that was one place where I did want to go was London. You know. And Nash took you under your wing. If I remember correctly, that first year, um, you know, going into training camp and stuff like that. I remember, uh, um, you know, him being a, you know, a local kid too. He, he kind of, kind of, you know, helped you, helped you adjust into the league and, and, you know, going into the Ontario hockey league, um, you know, you came out of, at a, you know, MVP at the OHL cup, you know, top scorer, couple points a game and you know in midget or minor midget and 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 then you got to go and you got to learn how to play a new role because you got to learn how to you know for lack of better 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 uh uh purposes you gotta learn how to be a pro right when you play at that level you got to go in and you gotta learn how to sit on the bench you gotta learn how to play the right way uh, you know away from the puck and this and that how did you struggle with that in your rookie year uh so my rookie year was 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 a tough one because I came out of minor hockey that you didn't really have to play defense. Um, and I know when we were playing that defense wasn't really much of a, of a thing. Uh, I used to just get the puck, come back at the puck and I'd be gone and I'd be up the ice. Uh, but nowadays we're teaching kids defense and how to play and what to do. Um, so that first year I sort of came in, I was just circling. I was always just waiting around for, for the puck to hit my escape, my stick. Um, and also you're playing against grown men too. I think I came in, I was a buck 50. Uh, I wasn't really that big. I didn't, haven't grown up, grown out yet. Some of these guys were men. They were 200 pounds and six foot one, six foot two. And <clears throat> so you had to get used to that too. But, but uh, 
but the first year I didn't play much. I think I had 17 points. Um, <clears throat> I know, uh, I know Dale, Dale was the one that, that taught me how to play defense and taught me what I had to do coming into the defensive zone. So I give, I give Dale a lot of credit uh, and Mark uh, on helping me get to that next step to learn to be a pro and, and to, to work my way onto the NHL. Yeah, for sure. And I remember, I, I, and I remember kind of talking your dad off the ledge. I talked about this with Shrempy and uh, I was living in Guelph and you guys were coming into Guelph for a game. And, uh, you know, Guelph was good then. If you remember, they had Callahan and, and your goalie that ended up in London, they had him at the time too. Dennis. Uh, yeah. Adam, Adam Dennis, was it? Is it yep. Adam? Yeah. Yep. So anyway, you come in as a rookie into Guelph and, you know, I, you know, if I think I got your ticket, Drew and, uh, Drew and I got, had your tickets and we're sitting there and we're watching. You didn't get a shift. Remember oh, that probably, game? Yeah. Uh, didn't get a shift. Yeah. Yeah. And your dad was like, what? This is, <laughs> this is out of control. And, you yeah. know, I'm going to, and I said, Drew, it's part of, part of the process, man. They're teaching him how to be, you know, a, 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 an accountable young man and a teammate. And, and y- y- you know what? They, they you know, it, it, you could, you could name a million guys that came through that program, <laughs> right. That are, you know, consummate pros. They come in and they're ready. You leave London, you're ready. You're oh, ready yeah. to be a pro. Right. If you can, yeah. you can get through that. And, and yeah. I know you have a special relationship with the hunters and, and Dylan, you know, Dale's son played on line with you for years. You're still yeah. pretty close with Dylan, aren't you? Oh yeah. 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 We're, we're best friends. We're yeah. keeping tight. I've uh, known Dylan since I got there since, since I was a 15, 16 or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. we, uh, we, we've been, uh, we're, we're, we're really tight. So, um, but yeah, so, but that's yeah, awesome. that's, that's basically it was learning. It was learning all about playing defense and and doing the right things uh, that gradually helped me into my next season with the London Knights. Yeah, and then the next one, you started, you know, just 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 pumping points in, and and the team started to get to a point where you guys were a wagon, and and you know you'd go on. What did you? What did, was it? Thirty in a row or something at one point? That that. Uh, I think year? that next year, yeah, we had like uh, I think it was like thirty something or thirty five or yeah, like a record. Crazy, 31. still record, and never yeah, yeah. beat. So yeah, it was thirty one. Yeah, consecutive games without a loss. Do you remember when I um um? When you got drafted, you got drafted. I was living in Guelph. And do you remember a guy, Howie Martin? He played for the Mississauga Senators, and he was another kid that I worked with skating. And uh, so you guys both get drafted. I think he went in the second round to somebody, and you you went, you know, seven or eight or whatever it was to uh, yeah. um, London. And 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 I we rented an hour ice at the Guelph University before camp. And mm-hmm. I brought you and Howie and your brother, Sean, and we went out there and showed you ways to not get your head punched in and cap if that ever happened. So giving yeah. you some little tips and and showing you how to grab on and bail if you need to bail and um, that kind of thing. So that's the stuff. They don't do that anymore either, right? You're not going to no. take a you know, no, 15 no, year old no. kid and well. throw. And your brother was a big man. He was throwing you guys around. And, oh yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can't do that anymore. I think no. they kind of take a lot of the hitting. Sorry, the a lot of the the fighting out these days. So we'll see what happens. Oh, for sure. And no, so Corey Perry, tell me about. I mean, he's still still pissing everybody off. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know thirty eight. He's what be thirty eight, thirty nine years old now, wouldn't he? Yeah, he's a year older than me, so he'd be thirty seven, thirty. He'd be thirty eight. Yeah, thirty eight. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still effective. I mean, he, you know, he plays it was Shrepp and I talked about him. What was your feeling on Corey and, and the success that he's had over the course of his career? T- tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Corey's been, uh, he's, he, uh, you can see just by the way he plays and what he does, he's, he's still a force out there. Um, he's still getting into little scraps and getting in front of that. His, his job is to get in front of that. Net. I know his, his speed probably isn't, like it used to be uh, and a lot of these younger kids coming in are pretty fast but um but he's still he's still effective out there and in, in, in that playoff round against toronto uh, that first game i think he came out pretty quick there and had a goal and assist or assist yeah but um but paris is he's 
he's a grinder and he's got a love for that game. I know playing at 38, you gotta you gotta love that game. You gotta be willing to to get out there and to do the stuff. And it's uh it's a long time. It's sticking to to that and and playing for that a long that amount of time. It's it takes a toll on your body and it's it's a it's a grind. So it's it's, it's good for him. Hundred percent. And then Shrempy, of course, I had him on, and 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 one of the things that I said in the promo, I still say, you know, and you played with him and Kane. Um, yeah. Hands, man, those two guys. Holy smokes! Like, where was Shrempy? You know, on hands that 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 you can recall from your junior days with him. Yeah, Shrempy had. I'd say his hands were up there with Kaner's. Were probably better than Kaner's. Yeah. Uh, Shrempy's hands were really good. He there's some moments you can see what he can do with the puck, and he can flop it up and bat it down and put it around his back and <laughs> some funny things you do. But, uh, but yeah, Shrimpy had the, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say his hands are up there better than Caner's for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And that's what I said too. I, you know, I think he's the best I've ever seen live. And then you had, you know, you had guys like you had character guys like Brandon Prust that wasn't even drafted in the OHL and, and, and it, you know, interesting story he didn't his dad was golfing on a hole beside dale and said hey you're gonna invite my kid to camp or something like that and he did and he make, makes the team and he was a real good he was a real good enforcer that could play the game right yeah Prusty, Brandon could play the game yeah prusty was a uh his first year he came in he was he was a he was he was still learning and trying to figure things out but he was uh he was tough and yeah he was, like, he was really good for us in that that mem cup run with uh i'm pretty sure he him and i think dylan or they were kind of that shutdown line against crosby yeah. uh, so they, they did a great job with that but well, yeah uh, it went scoreless in the final right you beat them four yeah. nothing yeah, yeah so prusty was uh prusty was a big help for us in london oh yeah absolutely and he uh he went out, he had a pretty good pro career too right oh yeah yeah yeah, he did. yeah. i remember he a real well. good fight in guelph and it was him and uh cam jansen Oh, Jansen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that was a that was a real good goal. So fast forward a bit here, World Junior Championship and Memorial Cup in the same year, right? Yep. Uh, uh, no, I, no, 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 no. I I didn't. Uh, that that I went. I did the Memorial Cup, and then I went the next year. I went to the the yeah the same year though within twenty within twelve months, right? You 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 win the Memorial Cup in in May. And then that Christmas, you, that that next Christmas, you were on the junior team, no? Yeah, but it was next year. Yeah, of, next season, I guess. Yeah. Season, yeah. So it was the next season of, of what it was. But uh, but yeah. So those, was, those two, those two are fun. Uh, the Memorial Cup because London, I don't know the last time they won it or the last time it happened. Or that sorry, that was the first time London ever won the Memorial Cup. I think, I think it was. It was yeah. yeah. So that was a that was a huge thing, and then. Playing in the World Juniors in Vancouver was was great as well. Um, you should have been in the North Dakota one. You were the last cut from that team. Yeah, it was the last cut. It was between me and um, oh geez, Colleton, Jeremy Colleton. Yeah, I think it was he, like I think yeah. it was him and a few. Wonder other how guys. that worked out for them. But yeah, yeah, right. So it was that. Uh, it was you know who it was. The guys running Team Canada now, uh, Alan. He used to be. Um, he used to be a GM in Guelph, and then he went out to the Western League. Ah, I can't forget his last name, but I remember being pissed off at him. He was a GM at Guelph, and I think I said something. I said, "How do you pick Colleton?" And didn't Colleton end up coaching in Chicago down yeah, the road? Coaching Chicago, yeah. I think he had like one year or something yeah. like that. With, with the so, Hunters. and it's like, you know, what game are you watching here? Right? You know. Oh yeah. Anyway, but uh, he made you hungry, and then that kind of that brought you. So that year. Would have been your underage year, you know, for the traditional world junior. And Perry was there, Mike Richards, uh, uh, Bergeron. Uh, oh yeah, Sydney was there, right? So yeah, all the guys so, were there. So when when uh, and I remember talking to you and Sid about that. So when 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 you guys were, you know, he's a year younger. So when if you were eight, he was seven, or you were ten, he was nine. I'd come down here every September and do do programming down in, in, in Cole Harbor where he's from. And, mm -hmm. and Sid, Sid came to my camps every year for two weeks. And I can remember comparing you two to each other. I'd be, Oh, you're looking good, Sid. I said, but there's this kid a year older than you in Toronto, Boland. 
yeah. some watch for him. <laughs> and I'd say the same thing to you. I'd say, oh, I got this kid in, in, in Halifax, man. You know, he's going to be good. And then, you know, fast forward, what, 10 years, and you're at a World Junior Camp together. Um, you don't make it. You don't make the club. He does. They win. Then you go the next year, play a big part, and you win in Vancouver. Um, yeah. And then, you know, obviously, you know, you, 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 you meet up with them a couple of years later in the NHL. So the year after the Memorial Cup, the year that you went to the World Junior, um, that was when you and Trempy just put up stupid numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was, <clears throat> it was Trempy and I and then Dylan. I think between yeah. all three of us, I think we had like oh, close to 400 points. Yeah. Um, I think it was like 300 and something. But um, I think I had one. I think I had like 130. Trempy had. 140. Yeah. Uh, Dylan had like 101. Yeah. But, wow. uh, well, that's yeah. crazy. You think of those <laughs> kind of numbers. Yeah. Did, so, um, um, so, so was that your, that you were already drafted at that point? Chicago had picked you the year before, correct? Yeah. 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 They already picked me up. So yeah. that, that so was they, already set. Yeah. They, and they pick you 32. And I tell you, I was pissed off about that too. And if you redraft that draft class, you're about eight. Right, yeah. seven. Right, you had, yeah. I'd say around there. There was Ovi yeah. and Malkin, and you know, but look at some of the guys, and you know, they were good players at the time. But just because you're a good junior doesn't always mean you're going to be a good pro. Um, yeah. Who's the kid that uh, Cam Cam Barker? He got hurt. He, Cam Barker, he, yeah. He was a good defenseman. He went three overall yeah. went to Chicago, <laughs> and then, uh, um, but yeah, there was a whole bunch of guys drafted before you that uh, didn't have even close to the career that you did. Um, yeah. but you know, it, it, it put you in a good situation, right? You can look at it and say, oh, you could have got picked in the first round by a, you know, a team that you wouldn't have, you know, had the team success that, you know, you kind of all guys all kind of came in there together and, and, you know, talk about some of the guys that were there, you know, Bufflin and, and Taze and Kane and Keith and Seabrook and holy smokes. I mean, just, uh, um, you know, you're a bunch of kids, you, you, you land in, you know, arguably one of the best cities in the world, right? Chicago's yep. just, you know, wonderful cosmopolitan and restaurants and nightlife and things like that. So you guys all kind of, you know, some of you spent some time. I know you spent some time in Norfolk in the American league and you put up numbers there. And, and again, it's part of the process. You got to learn how to play, you know, on the other, on the other side of the puck. And, and, and I want to ask you because you come out of junior as a hundred and, you know, 50 point guy, top, top scorer in the league. Uh, all kinds of individual success and team success. And then when you realized how good the NHL is, I think I remember you telling me that you had to kind of make a shift and say, okay, what do I have to do to play in the National Hockey League? And you figured <laughs> it out real quick. And that was be able – oh, you there? Oh, there you are. Right? Sorry, you someone, someone was calling. Oh, no yeah. problem. Yeah, you figured it out real quick, and 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 you figured out that if you can play, you know, a, as a defensive style forward, um, you know, you're going to have a longer career, and obviously you did, right? You figured out how to shut down, uh, shut down the other team's players, and that probably goes back to your lacrosse stuff, eh? Oh yeah, <laughs> lacrosse stuff. Yeah, uh, um, a lot of it stems from that but I, I know when i went to chicago i had to well i could have i still could have took my time and kind of i could have became a a big goal scorer but as of staying up in the nhl and not staying in the minors that like riding on a bus or or riding on a private plane with yeah with Philly Mignon and lobster and it, it was different. So I knew I wanted to stay in the, in the NHL. So I had to figure out what I had to do to stay up there. And I wasn't really putting up big points coming in from the, coming up from the, uh, from the OHL. So I had to learn how to play defense and that shutdown role for me was, was, was it. So I, kind of took forward that and I think Joel was the one that helped me with that as well and he yeah. kind of put me towards um getting into that kind of role and Mike Havlin actually he was my coach in um right in Norfolk Virginia so he was he was one of the guys that helped me as well but I think Dale along the way and then Mike Havlin and then Joel Quinville 
um, they kind of set me in that role of being that third line shutdown and sometimes that second line guy. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that was kind of the, the way that I, I, I had to learn to, to stay in the NHL and not go back down and ride the bus was to shut down their top guys. And I was good at it. And I, I liked it and I didn't mind it. It didn't bother me doing it. And it also, it also helped me figure out ways to, to play, but playing against those top lines, they make mistakes. They make big mistakes as well. So um, you get guys that are cheating or guys that don't want to come back and help out in the defensive zone. And that would, that would sometimes be to, to my benefit uh, of scoring, but but it was it was something that I liked doing, and it was fun. Oh, for sure. And and I mean, you know, credit to you to 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 you know change the way you played, um, and and realize that because a lot of guys don't. They you know think okay, and you know I'll I'll just continue to you know play the way I played in junior, and they don't have a career. So, 2010, you talk about being a defensive center. So if you remember this, anybody that remembers this. This this playoff run that you guys and you guys weren't favored to go and win a Stanley Cup that year, right? You kind of, um, you know, you were a good team, uh, but there were some other teams that that were probably ahead of you on the pecking order for uh, the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm telling you, we we were pretty because we lost against Detroit in the final in the semifinals and conference finals that year yeah. before, so that kind of helped before. us. Yeah, oh, but I'd, sure. say, I'd say we were we were one of the top favorites to to be there. Yeah, for sure. Vancouver was good, obviously. So you guys play in that in that playoff series. You play Vancouver, um, San Jose, and Philadelphia. So 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 you end up you're you're matched against the Sedins yeah. in, in Vancouver, yep. right? You yep. outscored them. You personally outscored them and shut them down. Right? Yeah. And they hated you, <laughs> and, and yeah, the whole they did. the whole city of Vancouver hated you. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know. That's another whole show. Um, then you go to San Jose and you got Thornton and Marlowe, two yeah. big, strong, tough players to play against. And and that wasn't the forty year old Joe Thornton either. That was the third twenty eight year old Joe Thornton, right? Well, maybe, not, maybe not maybe not twenty eight. I'd say no. No, no, I'd say I'd say he was still Jumbo was thirty. He would be he'd be around there, just low thirties, yeah. 30s, yeah. But big and heavy, and it, he one of the best passers in the in the history of the game. He could really find guys. I really oh yeah, yeah. Jumbo was enjoyed was, watching him. He's a hell of a yeah. player. Yeah. So you got them. You outscore them. Yeah. Then you then. go to go to Philly, and you get the Giroux line, right? Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. You know, when the Cup Caner scores, so you had a few different line mates that year. I know Buffalo was on your line. I think Caner was on your third line at parts of that playoff run, wasn't he? Um, I'm trying to think because I know sometimes they'd match match, but I, I don't think Kaner was not for very long. Yeah, no, he wouldn't be for very long. He he was he was always he would always be with Taser or Sharpie if Sharpie was in the middle. But um, it was usually me myself, Buff, and uh, Steger or Lad. Sorry, right? Yeah. So Laddie, it'd be myself, Lad, and Buff, and we would we would kind of relish that that kind of defense. I would get back and help the defense and do what I need to do. But they were great because they were playing. They had some offensive abilities to, to get the puck in. And I know big buff, he was, he was a big force and not many people wanted to have him coming down the, the back end of them going to the corner. So you still was, in touch with buff now or, or no? Yeah. 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 You always yeah. You're all in touch. We all talk, we all yeah. chat back and forth. Now you got so many, you got Instagram, you got Twitters, you got everything out there. So you you, yeah. you, you stay connected. Tell me about them. I'm going to show play a clip right now for our viewers. Um, walk me through this one. There to check him. Checked in by Bolo. His shot is knocked down. And away goes Bolin. He's got a lead to the net. David Bolin scores. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah, that was against San Jose. Yeah, that was, that was a big one. That yeah. was a big goal. That so it was uh, a two-one goal. Did that win the game or or I I, I, I forget. I think it yeah. might have, but I think T did the Taser block it and yeah, I'm not sure if Taser blocked that one. There's because I know there's one that Taser blocks, and I was just coming skating and I was like, oh, so I saw it and I just bolted and knew I had to get going. So I know 
Doug Murray was coming on me. I know he's not the fastest, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, San Jose was tough playing against them. That wasn't, it wasn't an easy round and going into to their building is tough to play in. So, and against Jumbo, Jumbo was, he was, I think, I think I chirped him one game. I said something to him. But, uh, yeah. and we went out next, next draw and my arm was already down there. I don't think I was wearing any cuff protectors around my my wrist and he just came down with that big 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 paddle and a smash right in my wrist <laughs> and uh i thought my wrist was broken to be honest i was like oh no but it was fine but uh yeah so we took around though i remember you doing the same thing to daniel sedin in the series before that no probably yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't we didn't like each other yeah. but uh but so but yeah so those those were some good rounds and that was a fun year so that goal, I remember you scoring one very similar, and it was the night that they so they they uh, they honored Channy in uh, London while you were playing there, and they retired his number. Yeah, and and a bus came up from the Blue Goose, and so your dad called and said, "Hey, you got any buddies that want to come on the bus? We're going to like we got a box," and I'm like, "Yeah, I get a few guys for sure." So one of my buddies was a Sleeman Brewery rep, so I was like, "Hey, you know." Let's, we're going to go on the bus. We're going to go to the London <laughs> game. And so anyway, we ended up uh, just pounding. You know what that crew's like, right? Your oh, dad, yeah. Your uncle. Yep. And yeah, so we end up and uh, we had a great time at the at the game. And, and the, you know, they honored Channy. And then you score the winner on Channy night. And you, you stripped a D to D pass to Guelph Storm. Uh, D to D, you poked it through. <laughs> and almost the same move that, you you, you know, you know, fake backhand and went forehand and yeah. uh, the place went absolutely bonkers in London. Yeah. That remember that goal? Yeah. I, that was big. I don't, yeah. I don't think I, it's tough remembering all of them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You had, uh, you had, but, had thousands for sure. Yeah. I remember that one clearly, but, uh, but yeah, there's some, there's some big goals in London that, that I put up, but uh, that arena was cool. That was when it was brand new. Now it's getting old, but uh but yeah, that, that London Knights arena was was great, and it was always hopping every night when when we were there. Wow, and that helped. You. I think your your team, the the, the group that that uh, you know Dale and Mark put together, you know, solidified hockey in that town forever, right? Yeah, they, yeah, because yep. they, you know, they're they're you guys, they have a lot to live up to 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 put a good product on the ice, and they do yep, consistently. Now, yeah, now they do. Now they got to keep putting a putting a a crew out there and they're always doing a great job with it. They're, I know Mark sleeps and bleeds hockey. He's, he's out and about. I don't think he, I think he might stay at home a few days out of the year. Yeah. He's always on the road looking for new players. And that's yep. why they're, that's, that's why they're so good is because they're dedicated to the game. Work ethic for sure. So um, yeah, you win the cup. Now let's talk about that. So how, you know, you, now you got, you got a Memorial cup, you got a world junior. And you know how old were you? And so you would have been twenty four, right? yeah, yep. in, uh, in twenty ten. And now you got a Stanley Cup. And I can, I at that point, I was doing a hockey school. Remember, you had your uh, performance training center there in uh, in Etobicoke, and I'd yep. come in and we'd do a hockey school together every summer. Mm -hmm. um, I I didn't get to the first Cup parade in two thousand ten, but my my girls were there, Maddie and Robin. And yep. There's a really good picture with you and them and, 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 and the cup, but how did it feel to bring that home? How did it feel to share that with the people, you know, from the community that you grew up? Yeah. Mimico's, they, they love hockey. Toronto's it's right there. The downtown is literally, you can almost throw a, you can almost throw a baseball to downtown from Mimico, but, uh, but they bleed and breed and they love hockey there. They, they, they it's just a hockey little town so to bring the to bring the cup back was a special moment and special moment for family as well because i know everybody watched me and kind of helped me get into where i am and was always by my side so to bring it back and take it to the blue goose and we did a whole little little fun time with it so yeah it good. i got the did a big autograph signing down on lakeshore so everybody can see it and touch it and look at it so those were uh, those were some good days Oh, absolutely. And, and I got a, a question from, uh, you know, one of the network guys here, Jesse Bell, he said, uh, how heavy is that thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's 
It's not that it's it's heavy when you're lugging it around the whole time. But I forget the I forget what the weight is. I think the weight's like fifty-five, I might be, sixty, I might something be, like yeah. that. No, I'd say lighter than that. Yeah. But when you got it for a full day and you're placing yeah. it over your head and taking pictures, it does get it's it's a workout. So I bet you it wasn't very heavy the first time you got it. No, it was pretty light that first time. <laughs> you, who you passed it, it to you? Do you remember? First year. Uh, I forget who passed. I, I think yeah. I might have been Seebs. Yeah. I think Seebs. Yeah, because yeah, you guys came in at the same time. You kind of go pecking order from vets down. and um... Yeah, so I think it was Hosa, because Hosa has been to the Stanley Cup right. a few times. That was his first one. So it does it goes down the peck. Like once it gets past the uh, the, the older guys, um, then it's it's whoever grabs it so you just kind of wait in the line and someone yeah. comes and gives it to you so it was it was a cool moment to do that so I, I i i a little bird told me that there was an incident with the cup was it the 10 or the 13 at your uh your spot the your house in chicago and I, there's something about it getting wedged yeah i think it was me and eager we were uh we were up top I, the, the cup guy at the time was a, a buddy of mine and there's usually a curfew on it. I think it was like 12 o'clock. Uh, but we kept it a little bit later. And that a full day of drinking and having fun with it. But um, I think we kind of stepped over. I think it was either me or it was probably me. Stepped over and tripped on something. And uh, I threw the cup. Didn't throw it, but <laughs> it was falling down and... It got stuck between in Chicago. You got these row houses in there, the right beside, like they're almost like, like you can't even like. It's pretty tight. Like it's the length, the width of the cup, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Smaller than that, but uh, it got ledged not too far down, and we were kind of like, oh shoot, we better get this thing up. So we had the cup guy by the legs, hoisting it back up, and <laughs> he brought it back up, and we had to bend it back and. Had the pliers, so pretty sure that that wasn't the real cup. That was a replica. So and that, that that thing gets beat up. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, like well, yeah, the kid from Colorado dumped it before they even had the pitcher last year, Kubel. Oh um, yeah. yeah. Yep. So so then you lose the next year. Was it Vancouver that beat you? Yeah, Vancouver because uh, they lost yep. to Boston in the final. Yep. Right, and that yep. was a bitter pill to swallow because of the rivalry at the time. But I think all that did was fuel you guys. Now watching Boston win. Uh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like nobody likes Boston. Everybody hates yeah. Boston. But uh, but yeah, so that was uh, uh that would have been eleven, twelve, and then twelve, thirteen. Uh, that was the lockout year that we won. <laughs> so I know during that year it was just a waiting period, a waiting time. And they'd come towards us and be like, Oh, uh, we're not talking. So then it's another two weeks. So you kind of hang the gear up. You don't want to get too tired out there. And so I'd take a few days off and then get back at it. But, uh, we came in that year and for that second Stanley cup, we, I think we, I think we went like 20, 20 games. I think we, we didn't lose like the first twenty games or something like that. Yeah, and I know a lot of people think the twenty thirteen team was better than the twenty ten team, but I think our twenty ten team was just bigger, yeah. tougher, stronger. Um, that twenty thirteen team, we had a lot of skill on that team, and we had a lot of hard workers. But uh, but yeah, that that twenty thirteen year was was a was a great year as well. Oh, for sure, and I I mean you know. Obviously, I've been uh, been a big fan of yours over the over the years, and and you know I've always been a Leaf fan, but um, you know as a Chicago fan, when you were there, I can tell you that. And uh, he, you know th there was some some really cool things that happened. You know, obviously you you know you guys are down Game Six in Boston. You're <clears> down. Was it Bickle and you? Yeah, Bickle and me. Yep, yep. Two kids that played together <laughs> when they're eleven, ten, you know. 12 years old yep. and you're down in bought in the, in, you know, Boston, you know, original six and you're with Chicago and original six team. And you guys yep. go out there and score a couple goals in 30 seconds to win this. And you thought it was overtime. I think, didn't you? Cause your gloves went off. Mm. Did you think it was over? No, no, no. I didn't think it was overtime. I just, what happened was, uh, I forget. 
who was in front there. I think it was Boychuk. Uh, after was, I scored, yeah. after I scored there, he 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 came down hard on my hands, and he saw it went in, and he just held on tight. And I just kind of said, uh, "Screw it," and I let my gloves off and just celebrated with my teammates. I know everybody thinks I thought it was over, but it was <laughs> over. But uh, yeah, but uh, he kind of had my hands locked in towards like his pants and that. Yeah. So I just pulled away and let everything go and said, screw it. Well, you score the winning goal to win. The, I mean, every Canadian and a lot of American and European kids playing street hockey or, or you know, you know, fooling around with their buddies on the ice on the pond. Oh, it's, you know, I'm going to win the Stanley Cup. And I, I got the winner in the Stanley Cup final. You did it, man. Yeah. You did that. Like, no, that's never going away. Right. No, How so, cool is that, right? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's a lot of, I know a lot of kids dream of hoisting the Stanley Cup and even doing that, what I did. So, uh, what did I, uh, Quenville say when you came to the bench? Your dad asked me to ask you that. Oh, Q. Yeah, I know. We went to, I think it came back to the bench and I was trying to get off, but Q was like, no, go back out there. We want you to stay out there. And I was like, oh, I didn't want to get scored on and I didn't want to get scored on and have, right. have that on me. So uh, I got back on the ice. I think I won the draw back. Got it in deep, and I just got off. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be that guy, but you know what? It was a smart coaching move because at that point, you know, in my opinion, and a lot of others, you were the best shutdown guy in the in the league. You yeah, know? and so and fun. you know, you win those two cups, and and you were. I mean, you had points. You, you know, you did everything, and it, it was it was uh, exciting for me. You know, knowing you. <laughs> to 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 watch that right and oh, uh, yeah. you know there's uh there it is hey yeah. the how picture? cool is that? that's the philly one right that's the first that's, one uh that's the first one yeah. yeah 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 and then uh so you score the winner coming home on the plane and you had a seatmate right oh yeah 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 that was pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool so we all uh, we sat i think myself i sat at the back and host sat just in front of me and a few other guys. I forget who sat around me, but uh, we had the the cut back back there and having a few drinks and uh, <laughs> out of it. And yeah, probably a few more. Yeah, you remember yeah. Uh, coming down? You did a hockey camp with me in uh, in Arizona back in uh, right after the Memorial Cup. And you came down there, and uh, one one of the one of the boys that uh, that was working with me down there on the hockey camps, Billy Dobbs. His brother's listening right now. Um, and you came down, spent a week. We had a, we had a real good time. But Robin wanted me to ask you. So my daughter, Robin, who, and do you believe this, Dave? She's 25. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Isn't that time crazy? flies, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Robin's 25. I can remember her and your brother, Brandon, battling with each other, um, oh, yeah. arguing about what, you know, who was using the wagon and things like that. But anyway, Robin and you, you and I were going golfing. We went and played golf in Tucson, and we had um, we had Robin with us. And, and we were, we, we putted out on a hole. She was about six. We putted out on a hole. We got back in the cart and you're sitting, I'm driving and she wants to drive. So I said, okay, honey. So, so I get her to, to press the gas and she doesn't realize that you have to ease your foot on the gas. Yeah. And she punches it and we go into a post. <laughs> we, we went right into a big post that was kind of guiding yeah. you towards the, the cart path, right? Yeah, and we yeah. thought she was hurt bad. Like she yeah. went into it. She had a bruise right across her jib. She wanted to know if you remembered that. Oh boy. <laughs> Scary, eh? It is. No, yeah, that's going back. That's yeah. that, that's, a, that's a while back. Cool. Oh. Yeah. And then here's you with uh President of the United States. How cool is that? Yeah, that was cool. That was, that was the first time we went with Obama. He was uh he was nice, nice guy that uh I know being Canadian. Going yeah, to the yeah. White House, but uh, that was really cool to go there. Yeah. I think, I think, I think I had a concussion there, so I was. I don't think I was all there. No, <laughs> no, I had a concussion at that time. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was the first time we went. So, but uh, uh, but it was a cool moment going there and, and experience that. Oh, absolutely! I bet. Um, so, you know, you win the cup. You're, you don't even have time to celebrate. And I'm, I'm coming to Toronto to do your camp this summer. We, and you used to have your camp and your golf tournament the same week. So that you, we'd, we'd go and we'd go on the ice for three or four days. I was living in Saskatoon. And, and then we would, you know, we'd play your, your celebrity golf tournament. 
Yeah. So um, we're all geared up to do that. You know, right before the draft, a couple days before the draft, like between the, the, the cup final when you scored the winner and the draft, you get traded to the Leafs. Yeah. The three picks. So how does that you're 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 on this high, you got this group of buddies in Chicago, and then all of a sudden, you know, boom. And they had to do it every time they won, right? Look who they get rid of the first time. Boff. And yeah. They made a big trade with Atlanta. Yeah. Um, but but you know, so it would have been bittersweet, but going home probably helped, eh? Yeah. So uh I remember Stan called and he's like, Hey, I was like, Yeah, I know why you're calling. I think I was just watching TV at home in Chicago and um I was like, I, I kind of knew something was coming up because uh, I know I'd be asking for more money after my deal uh, and two Stanley Cups. And but um, but he's like, he's like, hey, we're training you, but uh, we're gonna pay back. So it was kind of, it was nice that, that that he did that. To if there's one place I I did want to go was was would be back home and and going to Toronto to play for my hometown. So that was a cool. Cool moment. I love playing in Toronto. Actually, I think the first fifteen games there, I was on a roll and oh. I think leading. I was up. I'm not sure if I was leading, but I was. I was up there in points. Uh, you and, and Lupul were tied for points when you got hurt. Yeah, so we were. We were. We were on a roll. I think we were in first place there. We were running pretty high, and yeah, like we were. We were good. Uh, and then I got hurt in Vancouver, and that's when. Uh, it kind of went downhill for that season. And so that was well that was for the team too. Sweet. They didn't make the playoffs. You came back with about 10 games to go. You you were healthy enough. And, and for those who don't, don't know, what was the, the actual tendon that you got cut? Oh, it was my perial Neal tendon. It runs down the side. It wasn't your, it wasn't my, uh, wasn't the Achilles, but the one on the side that's important, right? No. Yeah. It's one on the, the side. So that's kind of, it's the mobility of, moving your ankle side to side and all that. So, so nobody, I don't think it, nobody did it. Nobody. Um, no, it wasn't a dirty hit. No. Was it? No, no, no. It wasn't a common injury Yeah, in, in the league. So like Achilles, it, it happens to most guys. He had kind of the routine of what the timeline. So with my perineal tendon, the timeline, they didn't really have anything there. They were kind of working with something new here and trying to, they had to figure it out. So, uh, but it was a long. I think I can't. I got back for the last game of the year, just to show that hey, like it's 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 good. But uh, but yeah, I think I played that last game and then went on to sign with uh, the Panthers. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, and then and yeah, you, you mean they they didn't make the playoffs. You end up with with Florida Dale Talon, who of course drafted you and was your first manager in Chicago. Yep. Was in Florida and he knew what he had, right? But you just and and didn't this this injury t- it, it it started to mess with your back a little bit too because you'd favor that leg or ankle and and you know so there was a couple injuries that you were dealing with in your in your Florida time, correct? Yeah. So when I got to Florida, uh, I was working pretty hard to get that ankle. I was doing a lot of things to to strengthen it, but uh, my back is also on that that kind of run that tendon kind of runs up my my back so it was just wasn't holding up and it was getting weak and I just couldn't catch up keep up with some of the the plays and it was weak and so it was just bringing me down and then mentally it was tough because I knew I could play but the the strength and of my back and ankle just wasn't there so it was it was between get bought out um or retire and 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 just call it quits and if i think if i didn't have two stanley cups uh i probably still would have fought through and would have tried everything i could but at the time it was it was mentally draining and i was like okay well let's just end it we'll be done and um we'll i'll move on so but yeah that was kind of the end of 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 my career there yeah, it was tough. And it was tough to watch because, you know, even, you know, I, I remember I can, I came in and then went to the, um, took the girls, uh, Robin and Maddie to, to, I think it was a Colorado game in Toronto. Um, and you were, yeah, just flying at a couple goals playing, you were a leader, you were wearing a letter in Toronto, which is, you know, any, any, uh, <laughs> young kid's dream 
growing up there. And, and, you know, it's just a shame because I think, I think you, uh, um, I think you might've, uh, might've, might've been used to, in that city a, a little bit different than you were in Chicago. They just didn't have room in their top six. They were so good, but I think yeah. you were going to be, uh, you were going to be relied on for your offense and, and, you know, yeah. it's a shame, but you know what? You also, I think the, the, the right decision was made, Dave, because you, uh, you don't want to compromise your, your, your health, you know, long-term, right. You got kids and a family and you don't want to, yeah, you know, yeah. you don't want to be in a wheelchair when you're 40 cause you, yeah. you played a couple extra years, right. When you knew you couldn't. Yeah. No, um, 100%. yeah. So, but you know what, all in all, man, I'll tell you, that's a career, right. Yeah, you know, so everything you want at yeah. every level. Um, I remember arguing with somebody when, uh, when, um, I, I probably a Vancouver fan cause they're not very bright. No. Um, but uh, anyway, they were saying, oh, you know, the Boland's lucky, you know, he's lucky. He got lucky. He ended up in Chicago. I said, Oh, did he? I said, do you think maybe Chicago's lucky? They ended up drafting him and, and, and London and, you know, the world junior team. I said, I said, the kid wins at every level. He'll do whatever it takes to win. Mm -hmm. I used to tell, I used to tell a story about you, um, you know, when you were a little guy and I don't know if I've ever said it to you, but I've said <laughs> it to probably 150 people over yep. the course of my life when I talk about that. How was the Boland as a kid? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, and I, and, and I said this and I, and I still mean it. If I had said to you when you were eight years old, you came to the bench, Hey, David, come here right before the face off and you'd come over and I, you know, Hey, you know, flip it up or get it back to Steve or whatever. If I had said, Hey Dave, I need you to go out there and spear the referee in the throat. <laughs> you wouldn't have looked at me two ways. You would have gone and done it. You were the type of kid that, yeah. you know, the coach, you listened to the coach, you did what the coach said, you worked your ass off, you didn't, you know, cut corners and practice, that yeah. kind of thing, right? I mean, obviously, I'd never say anything like that, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but that was kind of the mindset that you had. You'd do whatever it took to win yeah. um, within, you know, within within the, uh, the rules and maybe a little bit without them, but, um, you know, it, uh, it was a, it was a real good ride for me, you know, having coached you at a young age to kind of watch you not only mature as a hockey player, but mature as a man and a, and a father. And, and, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're just, uh, uh you know, a, a great part of, uh, a memory is a part of my life for sure. Watching. 100%. So I got a few little rapid questions here and then, uh, we'll wrap it up and let you get back to your nice Florida weather. Yeah. Um, What's a blue goose mean to you, Dave? Uh, well, the blue goose is done now, but uh, I heard that. Goose, yeah, yeah. So that's all done. But the blue goose was a uh, <clears throat> a local establishment where my dad used to hang out, and uh, I remember he'd be he most of the everybody would hang out there. All the dads would hang out there, and we'd be at the rink. And I know my dad would be like, "Yeah, I'll be at the blue goose. Just <laughs> just come yeah. meet me there." And I'd leave the rink and go see him there, but. Uh, but yeah, so it was always fun. Uh, the Blue Goose is, I know in Mimico, it's uh, it's it's basically almost like church. Uh, you go there, that's where people would go. So that was a uh, once 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 I got to the age of nineteen, that I was able to go in there and 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 have a beer. So it was a uh, it was a fun fun little little watering hole where everybody went and had a good time. So yeah, I, be, I, I may or may not have had some uh, pints in there for sure with yeah. you and your dad. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember. So when you played for me, we had one of the kids on the team had a birthday party and, uh, and, and I think it was Billy, uh, Billy, Billy Burke. Um, and, and his dad took us to the leaf game. And we had a box, private box. This is back at Maple Leaf Gardens. This isn't at the yeah, yeah. Scotiabank. Yeah. And they were playing Philadelphia. And your favorite player at that time didn't play for the Leafs. Remember who it was? Yeah, it was probably Lindros, right? Yeah, you loved yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, it was Lindros, yeah. Yeah, I remember you, you know, you had a little Lindros jersey, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure. I think I did, yeah. 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 That was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to make you sad on this one, but, <laughs> but I'd be, I'd be, uh, uh, remiss if I didn't say it because I met the, the, the young man at one of your golf tournaments, he pulled in in a Lamborghini and, uh, he was just, uh, you know, a, a real, uh, real good guy. We went on the bus back downtown Ray Emery. Let's yeah. talk about him briefly. And yeah, Ray know, was a, a great friend of mine. It's, it's, it's sad just with what happened and, and, uh, to, to see that happen. We, we actually became, uh, we actually became really close after we were done in Chicago. Uh, and then when I was, here in Florida when I was going through 
my uh, my insurance stuff. So <clears throat> Ray was a, a great person, just a all around great person in any general way. Uh, he would do anything for you. He would if someone was getting on your nerves, he'd beat him up. He would. Uh, <laughs> he, he was he was a tough. I know. I no know. joke, that guy. Oh yeah, we used to battle a lot in practice. We used to I used to shoot pucks at the back of his legs, and he would throw he would chuck sticks at me, and we would we would have a few a few fights. Yeah. Nothing crazy, but good ones. But um, but yeah, so Ray, I got to know Ray really well. We became really good friends, and he was he was basically almost living with me in Florida um, when I was going through all my insurance stuff and. We were golf buddies, and he got to know a lot of my buddies in London, and we came really tight, really, really tight. So uh, it was it was a really sad day, and it, it was a sad day for everybody when when we heard what happened to Ray. So uh, yeah. he's 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 always he always pops up somewhere. So uh, either a picture, yeah, on Instagram, or so it's always it's always good to see a picture and see him still the some of the stuff that's still there out there. But uh, he was he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, and I remember talking to your dad when Ray passed, and and he 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 mentioned that you were really struggling with that, and of course we all do when when someone close to us. But great player, tough guy. All I've ever heard about him, uh, unreal teammate. Like he he was a goalie that would go out and beat beat tough guy players. Oh yeah, right? he, 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 he yeah, yeah. What's Peters in Buffalo? He he punched him out one time. One time. Oh yeah, yeah. he was he was he was tough. He was a he, I don't know. I think he bought. I think he did some boxing on the side, but he was. Ray was Ray was tough. Yeah, you remember that he showed up at the Lamborghini. Uh, uh to, to we were at Angus Glen that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wheeled in. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Vince Vaughn. Yeah, I, I had a picture of. Uh, I'll share it on my uh, on my uh, my socials, but it, you scoring in Chicago and going over and pointing at him, and you guys became friendly too, correct? Yeah. So we were. Um... I was I stayed there after I think the 2010 or I forget which season it was, and I lived in Chicago all year round. I was like, oh, I'll just stay here. I won't go back home to Toronto or to London. Or, and they were filming the I think it was the Dilemma, and one of the PR guys was like, Oh, would you want you want to go meet Vince? I was like, For sure, I'd love to meet him. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, went met him, met some of his buddies like Steve Byrne. I got to know Steve really well and Peter Billingsley. Peter was, uh, he was a kid that got his eyes shut out in right. the story. That's right. Christmas and story. Just, just some great uh, people that I met and became really close and still are really close with them. Um, with all of, all of, all of Vince and Vince's family and everybody. So, um, but I got to know him there and then we just hit it on. And I remember going over to his place to play Nintendo excuse me, like Nintendo hockey after games and having a few beers and just shooting the shit. And, but he's a, uh, he's a smart person and probably one of the smartest person I know, uh, and knows a lot. So with the knowledge of, of everything and, and he loves the game and he was a huge Hawks fan. And so it was, uh, he's, he's a, just a same thing, just a great all around great person and guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, you, you certainly speak highly of him and, and fantastic actor. I mean, you know, is he that funny in real life? Like, does he talk? Like, he, he, he oh, yeah, everything yeah, he says, like, he makes me laugh. On oh, yeah. Like, he's the same as he is in movies, and he's exactly the same. Like, even his buddies, like, they're they're all comedians. So, yeah. Usually, when we're all hanging out, having a few drinks, uh, they get they get they get even funnier. Yeah, awesome. And now, one last question, David, and I'll let you go. I know you got, uh, you know your family uh, and, and yep. everybody ready for you favorite teammate of all time at any level oh geez i don't know that's a tough i one. know it's a tough one to ask a guy like you because yeah. you don't want to uh or you can give me three if you want or whatever no or i'd say there's a lot of guys i know ben eager he was my roommate yeah uh he was he was always we, we've we've always been tight uh seabrook but there's a lot of you play with a lot of guys that that are are all great teammates. That are you might have the one bad apple here and there, but most hockey guys are all down to earth and they're they're great teammates. And so the, the, those were just those Seebs and Eags that they were my roommates when I was coming through. Big Buff, he was great. Uh, there's a handful of guys, Taser. So it's 
it's tough to just pick one. There's there's so many. Right, for sure. And then is there um um is there any chance that hockey fans see David Boland in the game at any capacity here coming up? Oh, I don't know. No, probably not. I, I, no? I've, I've stuck to my golf game. I'm just trying to get better at golf. <laughs> yeah, how what's your handicap? Uh, I think I'm down to a I'm a I was down to a three. I'm wow. Back, I'm back up to a six. So you weren't that good last time I played with you back when you were in junior. No, I wasn't that good, but yeah, I've taken uh taken it now. That's kind of the the hobby of yeah. my choice is golf. So well next time uh next time we, we're we're in the same town, let's uh let's get out and we'll play. But we'll I just do. gotta thank we'll. a couple of sponsors and we'll we'll wrap it up. Road to the show here, guys, is brought to you by the Old City Sports Network. Go to oldcitysports.com for all your favorite OCSN podcasts, articles, and much more. Um, we've got uh, fanatics.com. We've got Rowan, uh, rowanebrand.com. You use promo code OCSN15, 15% off your vintage sports paintings. I'm sure there's uh, some of David Bull in there with a, with a Stanley Cup. Yep. Uh, Norsebeards.com, promo code OCS. For 25% off your beardsman products, righteousfelon.com, best jerky around, promo code OCSN for 15% off the best jerky. And we're also brought to you by Sterling Pig Brewery, Nishamani Creek Brewery Company, Hangman Brewing, Bright Path Brewing, and their links are in the description. Um, I'll be down, uh, we're looking at doing a camp in Florida next year in, uh, in the Orlando area. Maybe, Maybe. We'll, I'll try to get uh, your old man to, uh, to to make a trip down, and we'll we'll get out and we'll play. How's that? There we sound? go. We'll get awesome. it done. Well, thanks, okay. buddy. And yep. you know what? It's uh, you know, I, I it it's been uh, special for me to have you out here and and be able to uh, um, you know, kind of reminisce about about some of the things that uh, you know you accomplished and 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 just so you know, and and you, and I know you've always known this. I'm real proud of the the young man that you became and, and the father and, and the husband and, you know, everything that you did for the sport. Uh, mm -hmm. Couldn't be prouder. Couldn't be prouder awesome. to say that. Thank I know you, you. Thank you very right, much. Man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks folks. And uh, Thank we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.